Shalom to the elect of Yahshua, starting with the 144,000 elect men, 12,000 from each tribe, which consists of the so-called blacks, so-called Hispanics, so-called Native American Indians, and you Israelite foreigners, Hebrew Israelites, who are scattered among all nations, looking like the other nations, and speak in their tongues, Shalom to all of you. Before we get started with this lesson, let's face the East and give the much do all phrases, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kwadash, Koholo Yimla, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kwadash. And double honors to the apostles and elders and bishops of Great Millstone. And much due respect to you, sincere Akim, who are laboring, who are laboring in the works. And shalom to you believers, to the Akim wa Akwa, which will be you brothers and few of my sincere sisters who do subscribe to this truth, listening and learning in silence as the scriptures say so. I'm your brother Manazar Gabar, representing warriors for Yahushai. Pasadena, Texas branch. All right, Lord willing, this be a quick hit lesson, edifying and playing upon the tables. This is from End Time Headline. Ten signs that global war is rapidly approaching. Ten signs that global war is rapidly approaching. All right. The signs are the prophecies, okay? The prophecies written in the Holy Bible, okay? And low willing, you know, bring out some precepts. So in the caption right here, uh, few people anticipated the, erupt the erupting of World War I, but it happened anyway. Similarly, very few people in anticipated the erupting of World War II, but it happened, but it happened anyway. Now, as we speak, we are on the brink of a third world war. All right. There's nothing that no man can do to stop prophecies. Prophecies will be fulfilled. The words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh will be fulfilled. His will will be His will will be done on earth. All right. Um, so let's get this very quick. Ecclesiastes. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter three. I'm gonna give verse one. And then I'm going to jump down to verse 8. So you notice the title. A time for everything. So there's a time and purpose for everything. All right. So for an example, verse 1, right? To everything, there is a season. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. So in today's lesson related to war, right? Verse 8. A time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. We are definitely not in a time of love, so-called love. Why? For an example, look at America. Perfect example. The divorce, the divorce rate is at its highest ever been before. Caused by the majority of women here in America. Okay. Um, the marriage rate here is horrible because of majority of women has done it. Okay. I'm not going to get too deep into it, but to prove a point here that there's a time for everything under that sun. I mean, uh, under heaven, right? We're definitely not a time of love. 
Because, for an example, the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Right? We're witnessing this eon, right? This age, this world, this era. The wickedness here is constantly increasing. Sin upon sin, upon sin, upon sin, upon sin. It just keeps getting more wicked. With causing more people to wax cold towards one another. Cycle. No love, no natural affection. Right? In these last days, people are going to become more cold-hearted. So we're definitely not in time of love. All right? Love don't live here in America. All right. And a time of hate. We're in a time of hate. OK. A time of war. We are, we are in a time of war, not a time of peace. All right. We're in a time of war, global war on top of that. World War Three that cometh quickly. Civil war is going to happen. OK. All right. We are in a, we are in a time of war. So. Let's get uh, Matthew right quick. Uh, all right. When you read the book of Matthew, chapter 24, right, it goes into signs of Yahweh Shai's return. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the Messiah in the Bible. Because Lo Yahweh Shai, he is a Hebrew Israelite himself from the tribe of Judah, Yahawada, which will be today the so called Negroes, so called American blacks, so called African Americans, right? Who the world still to this day ignorantly calling on Jesus Christos, the Greek for Jesus Christ, right? Signs of Yahweh Shai's return. So some of the signs that we are witnessing that we in that time of the second coming of the Messiah, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 6 to 8. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, right? Threats of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, right? These prophecies, there's still more prophecies we're still waiting for to come to pass, to be fulfilled. For example, John the Revelator, he received a vision of what? The MOTB, the time where in Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 and 17, right? He calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark, a haragma. RFID chip in his right hand or in his forehead, the brain chip, for an example, just paraphrasing. We're still waiting for other prophecies to come to pass. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. The end of this eon, the end of this current world, this current era, age, right? Mind you, this is in red lettering. So, Lo Yahweh Shai, let's not forget. Yahweh Shai is, you no, know, he, he was a prophet too. He was the prophet, okay? The example of a prophet, right? Um, so to break down, despite all of the wars and rumors of wars happening in the world, the, the end, right, the end of this eon, this rulership, the end will not come until all prophecy has been fulfilled. So for an example, that MOTB, a major one we're still waiting for. We're still waiting for the persecution, right? The great insurrection upon those that fears Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shai. All right? We're still waiting for the standard to be lifted for brothers. Okay, and then the list goes on. All right? Uh, verse seven. For nation, for nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, 
scarcity of food, resources, victuals, which going to lead to many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine. Many people are going to die from starvation and hunger. Mentioned in Second Edgar chapter 16, verse 22, in the KJV Apocrypha. And pestilences, diseases, viruses, incurable diseases, epidemics, pandemics, and earthquakes, so-called natural disasters, a shaking, tempests, storms, hurricanes, and etc. In diverse places, right? So in diverse places, meaning many parts of the world. So in many parts of the world, in diverse places, we're going to be hearing about wars and rumors of wars in diverse places. In many parts of the world, we're going to be hearing about World War Three this, World War Three that, nuclear war this, nuclear war that, cyber attack this, cyber attack that, this war, 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 so, uh, civil war. In many parts of the world, it's going to be what? Nations rising up against other nations. A nation is a people before it's a place, right? And kingdom against kingdom. All uh, These are the beginning of sorrows, meaning there's other phases, other uh, phases to come. We got the, what, the, big, the beginning, the middle, the conclusion, the end, right? the, 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 what they call it, the, the, the climax and etc., right? So this is just the beginning. Ten signs that global war is rapidly approaching. So, right, we're witnessing the signs come to pass that there's going to be a global war and it is rapidly approaching. For an example, especially in uh, down here, right? What it says, few people anticipated the erupting of World War I, but it happened anyway. Similarly, very few people anticipated the erupting of World War II, but it happened anyway. Now, as we speak, we are on the brink of a third world war. Revelation 9 and 12. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 9, verse 12 in the KJV. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Right? Woe means destruction. Right? So the one woe that's past, think of World War One, Right? And then when it says, behold, there come two woes more, so two more world wars. Right hereafter, so woe means destruction. There have been two major destructions, and a third is prophesied. At this point in the vision, however, only one world war has been fought. Right, so let's get the precept so you can have a better understanding. Revelation 11 and 14. The book of Revelation chapter 11 verse 14. The second woe is past. And behold, the third woe cometh quickly. Woe means destruction. World War II has passed. And a third and the third war is coming quickly. Uh, let's just say signs. Signs that global war, world war, for example, right? Global war is rapidly approaching. The second war was passed. And behold, the third war cometh quickly. Global war. World war is rapidly approaching. The third world coming quickly. Okay. And while there's global war going on, 
right? Let's say World War Three going on, right? There's going to be civil war going on too, okay? Civil war. Uh, 19, uh, two. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 19, verse 2 in the KJV. And I, right, Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. Because in the, in the Bible, America is also known as spiritually Egypt. Egypt meaning bondage, house of bondage. So to this very day, we as a nation, a big bulk of us, Hebrew Israelites are are in the house of bondage, spiritually Egypt, America. So Egyptians, Americans, right? America, right? Egyptians against the Egyptians. American against American. All right. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. Americans against Americans, right? And they, the Americans, right, you Babylonians, and they shall fight everyone against his brother and everyone against his neighbor, city against city and kingdom against kingdom. So for an example, right, let's say out here in Pasadena, Harris County, right, you're going to have, let's say Pasadena, a.k.a. whole city versus Lee City, Baytown, Friendswood, Pearland, Sugar, Sugarland, South Houston, right? Dickinson, Webster, Ace Town, and the list goes on. All right? Neighbors, no neighbor, uh, people going against their neighbor. Literally, the actual neighbor, neighbor also goes into brothers. You even want to have family members. Bloodlines going against each other out here too in a time of war. Real soon when all hell really break loose. Right? In a time of civil war, you have the people going against each other, rising up against the government, fighting for power. And that just creates confusion, chaos, mayhem. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. Second uh, Ezra's thirteen to thirty one. This is the book of Second Ezra chapter thirteen, verse thirty one in the KJV Apocrypha. And one shall undertake to fight against another, one city against another, one place against another, one people against another. So in the midst of civil war, you're going to have race wars. For an example, the Caucasian race, the so-called white race, who still has that perpetual hatred towards us Israelites, are going to be going to war against each other. You're going to have Edomites going against Israelites, so-called white people going against so-called blacks. So-called whites going against so-called Hispanics. So-called whites going against uh, Native American Indians. Edomites against Israelites. We even going to have within the two-thirds, Northern Kingdom going against Southern Kingdom. Southern Kingdom going, Southern Kingdom going against Northern Kingdom. Because that's part of the curses, right? Uh Southern Kingdom and Northern Kingdom look at each other as two different nations. All right. Speaking from experience, I grew up in that type of environment. I went to a, a public high school in Newark, New Jersey, where that was common. So-called blacks going against so-called Dominicans. So-called blacks going against so-called Puerto Ricans. So-called blacks against so-called uh, Hispanics. And vice versa. So-called Hispanics going against so-called uh, blacks. And then within the Northern Kingdom tribes, even they think 
they're different. <laughs> you got Puerto Ricans, so-called Puerto Ricans, that thinks that they're completely different from so-called Dominicans and vice versa. A, a bunch of fools, man. All right. And one shall undertake to fight against another. One city against another. One people against another. It's like one place against another, one people against another, and one Rome against another. Rome also means kingdom. Okay. But literally, too, there's going to be a time where the heavenly hosts, the angels, are going to be going against the, the, the people of this world, these mundanes. Okay. Let's get that in the GNT. We can close up. Uh, uh, 13, 31. Just a good news translation. The good news translation. They will begin to make war against each other. It's like, yeah. They will begin to make war against one another. These Babylonians. People on earth in general. All right. So like, yeah. Damn. It says they will begin to make war against one another, city against city, region against region, nation against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. One Rome against another. So yeah. We in a time of a global war that is rapidly approaching. World War Three. Civil war, race wars, class wars, this kind of war, that kind of war. It's all just wars upon wars. We're in a time of war. Not the time of peace. We're in a time of hate. Not the time of love. So either one rots out the lesson was edifying, playing upon the tables. Repent, Yasha Allah, you Hebrew Israelites. Who has not repented to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai? Is like men, is like women. Repent from the twelve tribes. Okay, if you don't repent, you will die, according to the scriptures. All right, so I'm gonna close out by giving a much to do all phrases, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rachakodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders and bishops of Great Millstone. And much due respect to you, since Akim, who are laboring in the works. Shalom to you believers, to the Akim wa Akwa, which will be your brothers and few mighty sincere sisters who do subscribe to this truth. Listening and learning in silence as the scriptures say so. Shalom.